Hello, friends. If you're new, welcome. I do hope that you subscribe. For my subscribers, welcome back. You are the lifeblood of this channel, and you guys are awesome. So, today we are going to be talking about Jim Jones shenanigans in Ukiah, California. Let's go! Here in Ukiah, he constantly spoke of visions, but he also changed the focus of his sermons. This was out of necessity, because in Indianapolis, he spoke to victims of racial prejudice. He emphasized changing laws, and he justified this by appealing to the Bible. In Ukiah, most members were white. Although they sympathized with the victims of racial repression, they had not experienced it themselves. Jones switched to criticizing the government and unfair laws that were designed to keep the, the wealth at the expense of the poor. Jones emphasized that there were two U.S. governments, but I am not going to go there considering the state of the United States right now. Let's just say he was getting more and more paranoid. One major difference between services in Indianapolis and Ukiah was the lack of so-called healings. Jones realized that his better educated audience were less likely to be fooled by chicken guts that he claimed to be excised cancers. He'd already convinced those who came from Indianapolis. Therefore, he thought it best to concentrate on prophecy. Now, this is part of being a con man, knowing your audience. And uh, this is something Jim Jones did very well. He also backed away from predicting doom for the most part, although he did still mention the cave in the hills sometimes. However, this was more to reassure his flock that he would go to any lengths to protect them. Why the change? Well, he no longer painted a picture of Russia as a nuclear threat. Instead, it had been transformed into a socialist utopia in his mind that it sometimes was forced to bluff. Oh, and he claimed to be a reincarnation of Lenin. He still used the Bible to preach, but now he started pointing out the Bible's horrifying proclamations, such as women were inferior and the allowance of slavery, which he said was a precursor to modern-day racial injustice. Finally, something we agree on! Yay! Except the part about uh, the racial injustice because slaves in the Bible weren't of different races. However, he still recognized Jesus as more than human. Imperfect men had just written a flawed book. By 1967, Jones thought he had assembled enough loyal people to make himself a local force again. However, he knew that Mendocino County would not be People's Temple's final destination. One Sunday, he interrupted his own sermon in order to call an emergency meeting of his most faithful followers. He took them into a small room and ordered it to be searched for hidden microphones because of his paranoia. Of course, there weren't any. He announced that um, 
let's just say the extreme right wing were coming and they needed to think of alternatives quickly. Subsequently, he suggested that the temple move to Russia. Joe Phillips did not agree openly while other people held their tongue in check. He opined that a decision like this should not be made hastily. He suggested learning more about Russia and the Soviet government. Jones was furious, even though only Joe Phillips had the balls to disagree with him. Jones cursed the entire group. However, possible Russian relocation was shelved for the time being, but Jones never forgot Phillips' disagreement. Unfortunately, Phillips paid the price for disagreeing with Jones. Phillips wanted to have an affair with another Temple member, a request that Jones granted. But in 1968, Jones called Phillips out for infidelity. Phillips left the Temple and Ukiah in disgrace. In 1968, Another dispute ended the relationship between People's Temple and their landlord. The Church of the Golden Rule did not allow its members to attend other religious organizations or functions, but with People's Temple so close, it was inevitable. One young woman who attended People's Temple was Carol Stahl who happened to be on the Golden Rules Board of Elders. She had no intention of leaving because her father and stepmother attended Church of the Golden Rule, but she fell in love with a People's Temple member. However, both of them wanted to retain membership in their respective churches. There was still talk of the two merging and Stahl thought that the marriage might help. While Jim was all for this, the Golden Rule's senior elders forbade it. It seems some Golden Rule elders already suspected that Jones wanted to make a power grab. The senior Golden Rule elders thought this was part of the plot and ruled that if the couple did marry, they would have to choose between the churches. The couple could not retain their respective memberships. For his part, Jones supported the couple. After all, he had no objection to the marriage. He even went so far as to say that it would reinforce the friendship between the churches. However, the Golden Rule elders refer refused to give in and in true form, Jim lost his temper. He marched out of the meeting and Stahl left the Golden Rule that night and was married to her fiance by Jones a short time thereafter. People's Temple left because Jones refused to rent or borrow meeting space from the Golden Rule, leaving them with no place to meet. People gathered at other members' houses until a permanent structure was built adjacent to Jones's Redwood Valley House. Jones had previously ordered a swimming pool to be built for temple use. Many of his members had complained that they were receiving hostile treatment from the locals at Area Lakes, and so he built this swimming pool for the private use of Temple members. Construction of this Temple complex made the pool an indoor one. Members did most of the construction themselves, and the parking lot looked like a well-paved road, making 
for easy travel. Grassy acres provided the perfect spot for congregational picnics. Unfortunately, the paved roads also made it easy for detractors to harass members. They would even throw garbage onto the property, and the police were not inclined to help. While Jones despaired of this, he hoped for a larger audience. Although some members of the Golden Rule followed Stahl to People's Temple, the masses that Jones had hoped for never came. The opening of the new building was a festive occasion, and some locals attended out of curiosity. Some were even intrigued enough to join, including Don and Neva Sly and Sylvia and Tom Grubbs. They were impressed by Jones's sermons on egalitarianism. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. All social media links are in the description, along with the source that I used for this video. Please remember, if you would like something for your money, you can check out Teespring. Also, please leave comments in the comment section. Not only do I love hearing from you, but it also triggers the YouTube algorithm. Keep learning and searching for truth. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, stay safe and goodbye.